In this screencast, we'll show how to sketch a 3D part in SOLIDWORKS. This is an image of the pump that students will be making, and we're going to focus on just the lid of the pump. And here's an exploded view of that pump. We see several components, starting with the motor down here, the pump body, the impeller, and the lid. There's other fasteners and some barb fittings, but we're going to focus on this simple, relatively simple lid here. Here's a hand sketch of the lid that shows the key dimensions. Since this is a demonstration, we're going to take this part as a given. That is, we're going to take the physical dimensions as given, and from these dimensions, we're going to create a part. I've launched SOLIDWORKS, and this is the window that's displayed. I strongly recommend that you take advantage of the resources available. Starting with the tutorials, these will help you out a lot. I'm going to put this away for now, slide it to the side so it doesn't take up my screen real estate, and I'm going to begin with a new document. We're going to make a part, which is a single entity. Later, we'll use assemblies to combine parts into a more complex device. Uh, we won't be showing how to do a drawing in this sequence of screen screencasts, but ultimately one would need a 2D drawing to communicate to other professionals. Once again, the tutorials are available. There's a quick link here. I've selected part. I'm going to say OK. What I have now is a blank screen in front of me. Down here in the lower left corner is a triad indicating the coordinate system in this three-dimensional space. There are a series of short uh, quick links up here, icons. We have our assistance here, the reference material, as well as additional shortcuts. Notice in the left part of the screen we have various uh, indicators of planes in the three-dimensional space, as well as the option of selecting various tabs. So we begin as with our two-dimensional laser cutting drawing with a sketch. And I'm going to sketch a rectangle use the rectangle tool to sketch the square. By selecting the sketch, we're presented with a series of options on planes to draw on. So all sketches happen on planes. It really doesn't matter which plane you choose, but we might want to look at the triad here and develop a convention that the parts that we make will mostly be started in the XY plane and the Z axis will be, say, the axis of the motor. That will help us later on when we uh, build assemblies because the parts will come in in the proper orientation. One can always change the orientation in the assembly uh, tool. So I'm going to select the front pane. That isolates that pane and I'm going to sketch on it. It's a little awkward to sketch in 3D like this, so I'm going to use this tool here, the view orientation tool, to select the front view. That rotates that plane and now I'm going to sketch on it. The origin uh, here become, can become a fixed point and I recommend that as you build your sketches in 2D and then extrude to make 3D parts that you define all your parts carefully so that they have fixed locations in space. So we're going to anchor this this uh, rectangle by starting at the origin here and stretching out. You'll notice that as I stretched out the units uh, seem to indicate very large numbers like in the 40s and 50s. That's because the default here is a millimeter length scale. We'll come up here to the system options, document properties, units, and now we can change the units to inch, pound, and seconds. Of course, SI units are the future, but we have uh, inch measurements on our calipers and we'll use that for this demonstration. We've sketched our rectangle. We're going to create uh, a rectangle of known dimension by specifying those dimensions. From my drawing, I know that the rectangle is 2.0 inches on a side. It's actually a square. So I'll add those dimensions and constrain it. So now I have a sketch in 2D on the front plane or the XY plane. I'll accept that last dimension. I now want to use that sketch to create a three-dimensional feature. Switch to the Features tab. Select the outline here, this rectangular outline, and use that to extrude outward in 3D. The yellow uh, box here shows what will happen if I click Accept. 
From my other drawing, I happen to know that the dimension of this thickness that is out of the xy plane is 0.145 inches. So I accept that. All right, let me just hit tab to shift to the next. So it's dynamically adjusting the size. If I wanted to the part to extrude in the opposite direction, I would click this arrow and it would switch directions. I'm going to use the default direction, which is in the positive Z direction. The plane is 0.145 thick. I accept that. Now I have a part in three dimensions. I start with a 2D sketch, extrude into 3D. I can rotate this part to look at it from different angles. I can reorient it uh, according to this with these fixed dimensions here. And this allows me to quickly manipulate uh, to uh, an, some fixed orientations. The next step is to drill the holes or to remove the material. So I'll go back to the front view. So I'm in the features tab, which allows me to create three dimensional features. I need to go back to the sketch tab so that I can draw on this plane. So I can select the front plane, make that prominent. I can uh, select the circle tool and I'll click on this surface. Now this allows me to draw and I'm just going to sort of quickly sketch here. I have five circles in this plane. The center circle will be the hole for the barb fitting and the four around the edges will be clearance holes for the screws. So I've quickly sketched those. Now I can dimension and locate them and normally that would be a really good idea, but I want to show you how you can make some dimensional choices and then go back and edit them. I'm going to accept this sketch right now for the moment by clicking this icon that freezes that as, as um, I'm no longer editing it. And I'm going to select these features that I just created, shift key holding them down. This is just so I can simultaneously make all five holes. I've selected them, go to the feature, and now I select Extrude Cut. The tool pops up the features of that cut, and I'm going to select Through All as the extent of the cut. So before I do that, I can hold down the middle mouse and rotate the part and see that when I do this cut, it appears to be in the wrong direction. This doesn't make sense. So now I can click in the opposite direction and do through all. And now I've, I'm actually going to make the cut through the material. Before it was out of the plane, it didn't make any sense. So I'm going to accept this. And now I've got a, a plate, a square plate with five holes in it. And as I suggested earlier, these holes are not, they're not in a uh, precise location. I need to now add dimensions that will put them in the correct dimension. So let me go back to the front view. I can't dimension things in 3D. I have to go back to the sketch. I do that by at this um, part tree here. I expand this node and I can see that the sketch underneath is highlighted here, but I'm not able to edit it directly yet. I need to right click on it and then select Edit Sketch from the pop up window. So, what I've done now is I've sort of reverted to the primitive underneath the three dimensional object and I can add my dimensions here. So, I happen to know that these three holes are 0.156, they're 5 30 seconds diameter holes, and I can put in a point one five six so I've dimensioned the holes. I could define a reference size that's like a variable, a global variable, and use that to refer to these holes to make them equal. I just took the quick route of entering the same dimension manually. Notice that I entered three digits and it's only showing two. I can accept these and I'll go back to the document properties document options and look at dimensions and I with primary precision I can change 
the precision that's displayed on the drawing. Click OK. Not like those dimensions weren't there, they were just being displayed with two significant digits. Let's add the diameter of the circle here. This is drilled with a Q bit, Q size letter bit, which is 0.332 in diameter, inches. And at this point, I've so I've accepted this set of diameters. Now I'm going to locate each of these holes one quarter inch in from the edge. And I could add two dimensions to each of these four holes. First, I'll accept this. I'm going to set a relationship. I'm going to say this center, hold down the shift key, and this center are vertically aligned. And that allows me to specify the dimension up here, and that controls the location from this left edge in both places. Likewise, I can specify this center, hold down the shift key, and this center, and declare that those are horizontal. So now I have a um, relationship of these features relative to the edge. I'm zooming in and out by scrolling the middle mouse button. I'll add the dimensions from this corner. And now I can align the other aspects of the remaining two circles. So this circle, it's the center of this circle, and that circle are vertically aligned. And this circle and this circle are horizontally aligned which effectively specifies the four dimensions of the, the location of the four holes. Finally, I need to specify the center here. I'm going to specify the dimension of that relative to the edge, and that's exactly one inch. Now I've created a part with the proper dimensions, but it exists in two dimensions. If I click on this Accept icon here, I'm going to regenerate the three-dimensional model now with the proper location of the holes. So you can imagine how you could build a part and go about editing after you've uh, developed a preliminary design, change its dimensions of the features. That concludes this part of our uh, screencast. It's a very simple part. Basically, we've shown how to open a window that has a part that would be a part in it. We've shown how to adjust some of the default settings for the units. We've shown how to draw on a two-dimensional plane and then extrude into three dimensions. And then finally, we've shown how to add features, uh, add sketches to a surface and use those to modify the features of the three-dimensional object.